Welcome back to Garden Talk, brought to you by the Penn State Erie County Extension Master Gardeners. And again, I'm your co-host for today, Mike Bailey, along with Ellen DePlacido. Ellen, how are you? Good. That's good. Good morning, Mike. What do you want to talk about today? Well, we're going to mention cool and warm weather crops. Yeah, I think we've done a little bit of this in the past, but I think we're going to kind of run through it kind of quickly to mm -hmm. give, give some reminders. So right. what about these cool weather crops? Okay. Basically, cool weather crops are crops that can be seeded, transplanted, and grown in cooler temperatures. Kind of makes sense, right? Yes, it does. <laughs> They're the first to plant. But what you probably want to know is the approximate last frost date in the spring and the first frost date in the late summer because you want to plant cooler weather crops both times of the season. Okay, fine. Good point. Good and point. They can probably be placed in the garden about two to four weeks before the traditional last frost, but you need to be prepared to cover them if the temperature drops below 28 degrees. Yeah, you're right. When you get down into that area, yeah. you need to be careful. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to pay particular attention to your little microclimates because, you know, if you live in an area where you a little bit of a dip, okay, yeah. you're going to get quite a bit colder mm -hmm. than somebody, okay, who's out a little bit further and, you know, doesn't have that change in topography. Right. Uh, I know I see that in my neighborhood in particular. And we're looking for soils that are probably, you know, a minimum of, of 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, before you, you do that planting. And these cool weather crops typically require a little bit less direct sun, you know, maybe maybe about four to six hours of, of, of sunshine versus, you know, a lot of our warmer weather, warmer weather crops. And uh, typically, these cool weather crops don't do really well <laughs> in warm yeah. weather because they'll turn certainly turn a little bit of you know, especially your lettuces and your they spinach, bolt. they, they yeah. bolt, and, yeah. and the the, uh -huh. the leaves will get will get a little sour yeah. tasting, etc., and stuff good. like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you got to be you got to be careful about that. But like you mentioned a little bit earlier, these cool weather crops can really be planted in the fall also. also. Mm -hmm. So we we start a lot of cool weather crops right around Labor Day. Mm -hmm. now we, mm -hmm. You know, we always have a traditional nice crop of pak choy. Yes, okay? we love that. that. That everybody loves. <laughs> One of our so, favorites. So what are some of these vegetables or examples of, of cool weather crops, Ellen? Okay. The ones that we're more familiar with and I think people like are the peas, the radishes, and of course the lettuce. The beets, you'll notice some of these are your root crops, your broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, spinach, carrots, kale, parsnips, and turnips. And that's just a few of them, but those are basically the ones that we plant around okay. here. Yes, you're yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And it's it's the broccoli in the fall that <laughs> <Yeah>. my wife <laughs> and I likes. really, really <laughs> like because it, yeah. it sweetens it up so much, mm -hmm. so much nicer. But the warm weather crops, what about those? Well... They can be seeded or transplanted, and, and they'll grow and thrive in warmer temperatures. So you want to make sure that the soil temperature is at least 55 or maybe 70 and above is the best. Those seeds that you plant, if you plant them in the cool soil, they're, they're probably um, going to rot. And um, you can warm the soil if you need to by adding a, black, a piece of black plastic. But it's usually two or three weeks after the last frost in our area. Yeah, you're right. You know, to me, that always sounded kind of late, okay? Mm -hmm. That brings us probably to the, you know, right around the latter last week in May probably or even the first week in June. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Those warm weather crops, you know, once the temperature warms, once the soil warms, once the nighttime temperatures yeah. are up a little bit, they just take off. They do. You know, and, uh, you know, I go back to this idea that, you know, uh, the neighbor who puts his tomatoes in on, you know, on, on Mother's Day, yeah. you know, and they sit in that garden for three weeks and don't hardly do anything, but they're exposed to a lot of pests, a lot of mm -hmm. diseases, et cetera, mm -hmm. and they don't really kind of grow very much at all. Right. You know, and then you can... Memorial Day, you can put this, you know, tomato plants in, and guess what? Three weeks later, okay, <laughs> all your tomato plants are the same size, your neighbors yeah. and yours, yeah. uh, you know, because everything catches up mm -hmm. once the temperature sure. warms up. Once their soil is warm, you know, and everything, you can, you can yeah. we say that over and over and over again. So, you know, and the cooler temps will actually damage some of these, you know. Um, uh, warm weather crops. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful about that. And most of your warm weather crops require, you know, probably eight or more hours of, of direct, direct sun. sunlight. Mm -hmm. You know, and 
Some of the examples of our warm weather crops, which we love. Oh, beans, uh, corn, peppers, eggplant, tomatoes, summer squash, zucchini, winter squash, pumpkins, hot peppers, cucumbers, and that's just a few. <laughs> yes. You know, and, and experienced gardeners can, you know, they know little tricks to extend the season, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit a week or so, et cetera, right. stuff like that. But if you're a new gardener, okay, yeah. please try to stick to some of these guidelines um, because you won't be disappointed. Right. Uh, you know, and then as you as you learn a little bit more, yeah, go ahead and try some of those little yeah. tricks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Believe me, mm -hmm. okay, I I have a problem. <laughs> and I go back to this idea that last year I direct seeded some tomato seeds into my garden mm -hmm. on the 1st of June, mm -hmm. okay? And by Labor Day, we were having tomatoes. Right. I remember you telling me that yeah. you were excited. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't need to start your tomato plants in, in February to, right. to get off to a good start. <laughs> Ellen, it looks like we've used all of our time. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.